technical training of our clients and uh, partners in uh, Brazil of the G of the GPON and XGS PON networks of the data com company. She called this GPON and XGPON. Uh, uh, and XPON uh, networks, coexistence of technologies, and how to make the most of infrastructure. This, she's the only lady that will uh, be presenting at, for Lucknow this year. So let's uh, receive her with a round of applause. Good morning. Well, first of all, let me welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. I, th the, I think it's normal that here I brought uh, um, I, something. Uh, I, 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 I can't read uh, here, so I took some notes. And my idea is to talk with you about GPON networks and XG pawn, uh, and XGS pawn, how to make the most of infrastructure. We uh, de decided to talk about this because uh, of the trainings that I give. I am a data com uh, trainer for technologies and the products that we manufacture in uh, switches and in the data com. So I'm in uh, the telecom market. I've been there for about uh, 18 years. So that just uh, to let you know. So this question about the coexistence of technology came about because the participants of uh, the uh, uh, trainings that I give and the events in which I participate about three years ago went through the boom of the growth of networks. So we had the pandemic and many people found, in addition to having their fiber networks, found that it was growing and uh, the uh, and they were interested in providing better services to their clients. And now comes to the surface the issue of uh, the uh, GPON uh, of 10 gigas, uh, the network. I put together my infrastructure, and, and, and now the 10 giga network is coming. How will my network be? And so people start, start feeling uncertain about their future. So this was the reason why I brought this uh, topic to you. The GPON networks are already disseminated. Uh, they've been around for quite a long time. They were even standardized in 2003. And uh, they have 2.5 uh, gigas for downstream and 1.25 upstream, a better experience than NUI was delivered in the past. In uh, 2022, the technology that consolidated best in broad uh, band uh, uh, was uh, the fiber optic networks. Considering everything that we are uh, experiencing now, uh, not to say that everybody in the pandemic, well, we all went home uh, to, to work, uh, our children at home studying. We uh, had uh, to, they needed to um, be entertained, or many devices connected, we had this problem. So all the investment, I put the fiber, I bought um, the uh, uh, machines, I trained uh, my team, and now thinking of technology, we have to think of X GPON. X means 10 G, 10 gigas. And uh, acting with uh, 10 gigas downstream, uh, 10 gigas downstream and 2.5 gigas upstream, the, that was standardized in 2010, and it acts uh, in uh, the range of uh, um, 1,270 nanometers to 1,310. Uh, then we have the SGPON. We have 10 gigas that are symmetric, 10 up and 10 down. 
so for download and for uploading. And the same that we had in X, S, uh, GPON. So let's talk about the characteristics comparing GPON with technology that is already well disseminated in Brazil, at least with X. GS PON, we have a characteristic as a standard that is uh, de defined by ITUT. I ITUT with standard G984 and the other one about um, and the, the XGS PON with standard ITUT G9807. The, uh, wavelengths are in different ranges, up and down, downstream and upstream, they are different. And the users for port PON we find in G PON up to 128 and in XGS up to 256. I love to use the word up to because we have some requirements that need to be cared for. For instance, the uh, power. Um, and uh, the band that we are going to give the, the users. These are resources that have an impact on the quality that we provide uh, the users. We have the size of the packets. We're going ranging from 53 to 1,500 uh, bytes. And in X, 100, uh, 15, uh, 118 bytes. And then we have in uh, the scope, we have 20 kilometers. And in both, and the window is uh, from between the first and the last new, we have 20 kilometers distance. However, in the two technologies, we can uh, work with an extended distance. This is uh, uh, foreseen in the standards and also <coughs> the power uh, estimation. And we want to reach with 200. Um, 128 or 256 uh, necessarily. In uh, the uh, bandwidth, the first is symmetric and the, the other one is asymmetric. As to the structure of the GPON network, first we are going to see here to the right, we are going to see the network of the I, uh, ISP where we have layer two, three, and MPLS to do this authentication so that the end user may have access to the their IP address and obtain their navigation profile to go out to the internet. In addition to that, there can be other services like voice or video. Then we have OLT as a border device because they have the two technologies. One is internet technology, Ethernet to be able to communicate and GPON or GS PON. So this is the optical distribution network where we'll have the fibers, the splitter, and all the passive part, the one that doesn't require power. Now, one of the advantages of G PON or XGS is that we can reach out to several clients at the same time. So finally, corporate clients or also residential clients. Now, for this to work correctly, we have two visions. One is the downstream or OLT to ONU, where we use TDM technique, the time division multiplexing. So OLT will change this signal and send all to ONU. And each ONU will only take the information or the packet that is addressed to it. Or we can follow this on, this, on the schematic representation. XGS, PON, and GPON go through the distribution with the packets and reach every ONU. So this is valid for GPON and for XGS, PON. So each ONU will know that this information is submitted through the encryption agreed on when doing the provisioning. So here we see the two wavelengths for GPON and for XGS PON with the colors. It is very important to retain this information now. Then we have the upstream view. <coughs> so M1 ONU to OLT. Each will transmit in given time intervals through the TDTMA technique. So 
TDMA. So they speak over a given period of time to avoid collisions. This does not mean that O and U might change that time uh, that was agreed on because the intervals have sort of a guard time. So it might speak a bit later. So what will the OLT do all the monitoring in order to have more time in order to speak again? So this small detour doesn't have an impact on the client's traffic. This has been foreseen in the standards. So we're going to do all the monitoring on this. And the GPON, even though this is a passive network, nevertheless, this is a live network. Now, what does this mean? We include ONU, we take out ONU. So this will depend on the temperature and the wind speed because we have the resistance of the materials. So fibers respond differently on hot days, or on cold days. They, we have the air, uh, the fiber that is in the air. So there are fluctuations in the fibers, and this leads to having different distances, and this implies having to recalculate things at all times. And if the ONU in goes over to the time corresponding to the others, what we hear is that this didn't turn off the laser. So this ends up having an impact on the entire port. This will then affect the client's traffic. So here, the packet is sent in the agreed time, and it will reach OLT. But over here, we have the wavelengths. They are in different colors because I already have a GPON network, and now we're going to have XGS PON. So how do I go about this? Well. Because we have different wavelengths, we have a device called WDM. This is a passive device that does multiplexing and demultiplexing of that signal. So this allows to combine different wavelengths and one single fiber for the purpose of transmission. What do we have here then? We don't have an animation. I thought this had an animation, but it's okay. So in orange, we have GPON and XGS, orange and green. So the two formations will reach the WDM. They will do the combination. And this is the only way in which this can be done, because we will be transmitting the two wavelengths, WDM upstream. It reaches the OLU. And then provisioning will be done depending on the features. G, if it's GPON, then GPON. And if it's XGS PON, then it's XGS. We have WDM. It can be a one or four ports. Remember, this is like a splitter. If we look at this physically, and even because of the design it has, it reminds us of an inverted splitter. Right? So show me. <laughs> Tell me if you agree. It looks more or less like this. So what do we have over here? We have two entries, two, uh, one for each, and each goes out to the distribution network. So if we look at those who came across me today, this is a splitter. And WDM is combining wavelengths, so we can transmit this in between. And transmission is passive because we have the this address to the distribution that we have. This signal will be transmitted through the OLT. It reaches then WDM1, and it will work with the features I described. And when returning, it's going to submit the information through the wavelength, and multiplexing will be delivered at the correct port. Now, logically, what we see here in the GPON port is what we have over here. This is one with the two coexisting technologies in orange. We have GPON with 2.5 down, download and 1.25 upload. And then we have XGS 
with 2.5 up and 10. This is a configuration we see in the OLT. Sometimes we don't do bandwidth control in OLT, so we remove this task and we include that in the concentrator. So when we work with WDM, this offers other options for applications in our day-to-day -day activity. Now, ruling out the doubts we had, we can now consider my network is ready. So what do I do with XGS? When we have OLT GPON, we then have also the OLT XGS PON. The two will reach WDM R1. So enters the distribution network through the splitter and then reaches that OLT. So here, whether this is a GPON network or an XGS PON network, this has to be planned and plan, planned and organized so it has a proper performance so it then can split this. The power budget has to be complied with, so we really have to pay attention to the power of the transmission. So the result of that should be higher than the losses that take place in, the, in between. The same thing happens when we go out and we add fuel to the car and we might estimate that we have sufficient to reach destination or some additional fuel. The same thing happens with the power budget, but it has to be more than what we read or read. So we have to leave home and reach the destination and come back. So we need to have more fuel. <coughs> the same applies here to the power budget. This will then be organized depending on the technology. Now let us look at a different type of situation. Here we have GPON and XGS PON on the same OLT. So we have exclusive ports and hybrid ports for them to be able to operate. Thus, we can have a GPON exit and an XGS PON delivered in WDM and the division takes place in the network. There is a third application and this is when we have equal or different OLTs. But if we introduce XGS, this is done in a splitter one, two, and from there it goes on to WDM. Now let me remind you that G bond goes up to 128 and XGS goes through to 256. So there is a balance in the amounts and we must not forget the budget, the power budget. Then there is another point that it has a greater visibility with XGS, namely the delivery of corporate networks. Now we have 10 gigabytes upload and 10 gigabytes download. Now why don't we use this to deliver in the dedicated options? So this is a benefit of the provider when they have a link with the OLTG PON for a specific locality or neighborhood. So here we also have the ONUs in format SFP. These are more addressed at the corporate part. So this is a transceiver format, so we insert that in a 10 giga port, and this is XGS or lesser if it is ONU GPON. Now from the standpoint of the OLT, this is a new bridge, but from the standpoint of the router, this is a transceiver. We also have traditional applications. These are all those you have for the PON world. We can have, for example, attention paid to infrastructure such as roads. So here we have help telephones and also points that goes through these roads that can stop at sort of booths. And why not use PON? technology, we can add an OLT along that path, along that road with some ports that cater for some distances and others for others. So always respecting the 60 distance. Now let us look at the LAN network with these options because this is a mark that is growing a lot in shopping centers and in co-works. 
And then we have matrixes uh, and uh, branches can be with the same OLT or with uh, different OLTs and also traditional services, voice services, vid video and data, and uh, the access to a remote POP, and maybe using uh, uh, switch resources that OLPs have. Could be layers two, three, or PLS to make the most of uh, the investment. Now, uh, I already talked about that uh, uh, extended distance and uh, the scope. Uh, and let's see that in order for us to be able to comply with that 20 kilometer distance respecting the window between the first and the last, we have to uh, talk about uh, the uh, ranging, the uh, physical range. So uh, the power, how the sensitivity of uh, how sensible the uh, uh, device is so we have a loss by kilometer the same thing happens with the fuel in your car you can uh, travel uh, so many uh, kilometers by liter and here re re depending on the wavelength we also have losses and the second point has to that uh, 20 kilometer range between the first and the last and the third issue that I'd like to mention that is not here is that the OLT team uh, uh, machine has a resource that is extended uh, uh, ranging that depends on uh, the vendor it can be configured for one port and the other and that increases our flexibility usually when we have this range issue I I'm usually asked well I'm going to use a G pawn lasso with uh, more power with different characteristics to be able to reach 60 that's a question, but it's not like that. We have to respect that 20 kilometer distance between the first and the last. The difference, if we compare it to uh, with a car, is that in the car we, we put more fuel so that we would have a margin. Now, in, if we pay attention, the ONU will always transmit between 4 and 9 uh, uh, dBm, depending on the laser. In X is G1, we have three classes, N1, N2, and E1. The, that usually gives us nine combinations. In bold, we have the combination of 30 dBm between uh, N1 uh, and N. Uh, then we have 32 dBm, N1 with N2 and then 34 dBms. When we install this uh, we, in the OLT, we are incorporating these characteristics and will act based on that and doesn't have an impact on the future configuration, depending on the current configuration. And we can combine different lasers in the OLT and the ONU, but always as long as we respect the power budget. And now to clarify things a bit more, I present five scenarios. In green, we have the first ONU positioned very close to OLT with those 20 kilometers in the second. Second picture starts in kilometer 10 and then goes to 20, then from 20 to 40, from 30 to 50, and uh, 40 to 60. And the part that I marked in red is where we don't have N1. That is only what we have it as if it were fiber. And it starts precisely where the green arrow starts. That is what I wanted to tell you. I want to talk a bit about the coexistence and uh, feel less secure when we consider the networks and the way we operate. I have a minute left, right? Okay, so with this, I'll finish. This is my contact information. If you are more interested in uh, hearing more about this, uh, there you can contact me. Thank you for your attention. Does anybody have any questions for the speaker? There are no questions. I'm Douglas. The question is whether is about the passive uh, uh, machine. I'd like to know whether the vendor uh, needs to be the same or whether it can be different. The two OLTs, the one that does GPON and XGS bond, do they need to be the same vendors? No, it's a passive machine. It can be provided by any vendor. Thank you. 
Any more questions? So, as there are no more questions, a round of applause for the speaker.